Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to use the rejection region decision rule in hypothesis testing. We are going to decide if you should reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. For this example, I did give all of the critical values. I do have other videos that show you how to find either your Z0 or Z star critical value or your T critical values depending upon which hypothesis test you are using. In this video, I do use both Z and T because the decision rules are the same. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're using a Z test, a T test, a one proportion Z test. Any of those tests will make the same conclusion regardless of which test you're using as far as the rejection region decision rule goes. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my advice to you is to draw a picture with the critical value shaded uh, whenever you are using the rejection region decision rule. So for the first one, we have a critical value of Z0 or Z star. Um, depending upon your textbook, it could use this or this for critical values. There could be other symbols used also, but those are the two that I'm familiar with. And our critical value for this one is 1.96. The critical values are based on alpha levels, and like I said, I do have videos that show you how to find these values. I just gave them in this video for ease of use. Okay, uh, the alternative hypothesis always determines the tail of the test. So since this one is greater than, this tells us that it's going to be a right tail test. So when I draw this out, since it is for the mean, that tells us, and we have a z-score, that tells us we're going to have a normal curve. Okay, and our rejection region starts at Z equals 1.96. So our Z star is 1.96. Okay, so this is going to be our rejection region for this test. Okay, we always go to the right whenever our alternative hypothesis is greater than. So if we look at our first Z score, our first Z score is 2.04. 2.04 falls to the right of 1.96, so this is in the rejection region. So anytime it is in the rejection region, you are going to reject the null hypothesis. So for this one, we would reject the null hypothesis. That tells us that our evidence points to the alternative being true based on our data. Okay, for the next one, we have z equals 1.04. 1.04 is going to be to the left. So this would be z equals 1.04. And since it's not in the rejection region, we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that would be our decision. Okay, for the next one, I did use a critical value T. That means that this would be a T test for the mean. But like I said, it doesn't matter which hypothesis test you're using. You're still going to draw your picture. Um, depending upon which test you're running, your model could look slightly different. T looks very similar to the normal curve. Um, it just has a little bit more wiggle room in the tail. So we would still draw out a bell-shaped curve for a t-test. Um, for this, this one, if you notice, I do have both plus and minus. That's because it's not equal to. So whenever it's not equal to, this tells us that it's going to be a two-tail test. And that means our critical value can be either negative 2.131 or positive. So if we put our negative one, this would be our T star or T naught of negative 2.131. And like I said, the reason I put both of these down is different textbooks use different symbols. So just use whichever one your textbook is using. Okay, so for this one, we would have positive 2.131. So both of these are going to be our rejection regions. So if it falls to the left, of the negative 2.131 or to the right of positive 2.131, then you're going to reject. If it falls in between, then you would fail to reject. Okay, so for this one, let's look at our first one, our t equals negative 1.07. So that would put it about right here. So since this one is not in either of those blue areas, we would fail to reject. It's not 
in the rejection region, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, if we look at our next one, since it's 3.205, 3.205 falls to the right of 2.131, so it's in the rejection region, so for this one we would reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and then one last one, and the last one is for a left tail test. And the reason I know that this one is left tail is because we're going to look at our um, alternative hypothesis. So anytime the alternative hypothesis is less than, it's going to be a left tail test. And that means our critical value has to be negative. So if we draw this one out again, because it's Z, we're gonna go back to our normal curve. And we would go to negative 1.645 and our rejection region would be anything to the left of that. So this would be our rejection region. If it doesn't fall in there, then we wouldn't reject. Okay, um, for this one, the reason I used P is because this is a one proportion Z test. So P is always used with a one proportion Z test. So you can look at the symbols to help you decide what kind of test it is. Okay, um, so for this one, our standardized test statistic that was calculated using the formula for the one proportion Z test is Z equals negative 1.85. Since negative 1.85 does fall to the left of negative 1.645 on a number line, it falls in the rejection region, so we would decide to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and then our last one is Z equals negative 0.75. That would be to the right. Okay, so for this one, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, in hypothesis testing, you can either reject the null or you can fail to reject the null. We never make a conclusion based on the alternative. It's always about the null hypothesis. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.